uh, boundary conditions and so on. So these are all uh, fairly uh, standard things. And uh, in this particular case, actually, in our simulations, we use lamps. Uh, we use a very well-known uh, MD package uh, that is available uh, uh, open source. And uh, it has a visualizer. And these are some of the, uh, the parameters we have used. Uh, we use the Eureka potential uh, in modeling uh, 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 silicon substrates. We use actually TERSOF. And then for the interaction at the interfaces, we use uh, uh, Leonard Jones for the uh, simulation of the, uh, the interfacial uh, interactions. Uh, so uh, one issue with uh, when you try to do these things, uh, and, and again trying to relate it to uh, sort of you know like what we can normally measure in laboratories. Uh, anyone who is familiar with mechanical testing knows that. Uh, the experimental strain rates are these, okay? And uh, so experimental strain rates are, you know, fairly, uh, uh, fairly sort of, you know, like high strain rates, but, uh, uh, but we cannot actually do this in uh, in uh, in a simulation. It's, it's extremely expensive, right? And, uh, and it would be sort of, you know, like uh, impossible. So, so all the MD simulations are done with very high strain rates. And high strain rates that, uh, on the other hand, no machine can, a physical machine can ever simulate. Uh, so uh, so we, 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 of course, we have to go with that. But we also look at, to, to the extent possible, how does the uh, strain rate actually affect our simulation. One thing we started was actually to take a sort of, you know, like basic graphene sheet and assume that there are some defects and try to understand what happens to the strength of the graphene sheet at various temperatures. So here is a simulation. So what I show you here is, uh, is a basic graphene sheet and uh, we are randomly we have created 2% vacancies. Okay. So, so two percent vacancies, and what we do is actually because it is random, we create five systems like that. Okay, so not just one random system, five systems we simulate that, and these are the simulations at various strains. Okay, and and you can see that uh, sort of you know like the, the bonds are breaking, and then you can actually uh, take these results, you calculate the potential of this system. And then on the basis of that, you can get the, uh, the, the stress uh, strain curve. And, and on the basis of that, one can find actually the, uh, the strength of the, uh, of the sheet. So one can do this simulation for various uh, amount of vacancies and, uh, and then different uh, strains and so on. And, uh, and that would actually give you uh, 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 sort of, you know, like, fairly nice uh, representation of uh, what is the strength of graphene at different temperatures and so on. So if you want to do this, of course, fine. If you have a, a MD package, you can go and do this uh, many times. It's good. Uh, but we try to do sort of, you know, see whether we can find another shortcut uh, to, uh, to get this results. And here we actually use one of the uh, well-established principles. Uh, which is related to uh, what is called the Bayless principle, uh, which says that the fracture initiates when this condition is satisfied. Okay, and uh, this is the this tau here is called the durability uh, function, and that is the temperature, and then that is the time, and Tf is the time to failure. And uh, then what we do is actually we get the uh, durability function using the Arrhenius formula. Uh, this is a very well known thing when people study free rates and so on in materials. Uh, we use this kind of formulation, okay? So there's a constant here, activation energy, and the Boltzmann constant, and the temperature in, uh, in Kelvin. So uh, take that one, and uh, uh, we uh, uh, take this equation and we uh, further expand this into this form. Uh, where tau zero is actually the vibration period of uh, carbon atom, which is about, uh, I think, two nanoseconds. And n is the number of bonds. Uh, UV, U zero is the bond energy. Vacancy concentration, K is a constant. And this is something that depends on the chirality. 
And uh, this is an equation that we have developed using MD simulations. So we try to get a stress-strain relationship, okay, and using MD simulation. So there is some kind of, you know, like empirical sort of, you know, curve fitting uh, that, that has to be input into this. And then we try to solve this equation, okay. So solving this equation is pretty straightforward. You, uh, you take some time and then you integrate this one. You plot that one, you plot the right-hand side, and then where the two things meet actually is the factor point. So you can get fracture point for different temperatures, okay? And, and then we have this relationship. And uh, so now we can actually go back and then we can try to simulate, okay? Uh, we can try to simulate what we can get from that uh, simple Bailey's principle and Arrhenius model, right? And, and what we would get from the, uh, the MD. So you can see I'm comparing what the uh, so the continuum type models use me, and uh, and then also the MD use me, right? So you can see that actually, you know, like I mean, for all practical purposes, uh, what you see between the two systems of results actually are pretty uh, pretty good, okay? And the good thing is that uh, certainly, you know, like I mean, uh, in terms of the amount of computation needed, uh, this one is about uh, ten to the power times six. Uh, faster than the MD simulation. And uh, the same thing uh, is now being done, uh, of course, the same uh, type of, uh, uh, same expression. Now we looked at the uh, strain rate dependence of the strength. Uh, so you have the MD, uh, you have what is given by the model. Uh, again, MD for two types of uh, graphene sheet. One is zigzag, the other one is armchair. And, and again, you can see that, you know, like, yes, of course, it's not perfect agreement, but for all practical purposes, you know, like, within about 10%, uh, you can get, uh, get uh, pretty uh, uh, reasonable results. Uh, uh, strain rate calculations, uh, similar. So strength uh, <coughs> and temperature against strain rates. Uh, so as I said that, you know, like, I mean, these are the MD simulations that we have done, right? But these strain rates you can never even simulate by MD because it would take a huge amount of time for us to do at those strain rates, right? But the but the model, uh, uh, the sort of the continuum type model allows us actually at least look at what would be the rates. And assuming that it is working well in this range, uh, you know, like we might be able to say that at least this is uh, gives us a reasonable understanding of how things behave. Uh, the next one is now try to sort of, you know, like now these are sort of randomly uh, dispersed uh, defects, right? But if you have, say, for example, a row of atoms taken out, uh, then what you would have a graphene sheet, which would have something very similar to a crack uh, in, uh, in uh, sort of, you know, a very well established problem in fracture mechanics, right? So here is the system. So, uh, you know, like this is, you can consider this as, uh, this is a graphene sheet, and you have a row of atoms missing, right? And uh, how can you sort of, you know, simulate something like this? And actually what we did was we analyzed this problem uh, using MD. So we did a lot of MD calculations for a system like that, okay? And, and we actually calculate the uh, sort of the, uh, the stress acting on this uh, tip region using MD calculation. And uh, so if you take sort of, you know, the atoms in that region, you can calculate what is the, uh, the equivalent stress in that region, right? And uh, then you can actually plot curves. And that shows behavior which is very similar to what you would find in the classical uh, 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 fracture mechanics. The square root similarity, Everything actually is simulated, right? And uh, so here, uh, so knowing that we have a paper in uh, uh, in International Journal of Fracture actually on on this that was I think published about two or three years ago. And uh, so we we have this system, and what we are doing is uh, we have the Griffith's energy balance, right? Uh, which is given by this equation. It's a very well established equation. And then there is a paper actually that. Uh, 
describe the model when you have discrete systems. Uh, then one can replace this by a model like that. And where you can see that you know the strength of the pristine sheet, uh, the crack tip radius is defined as basically this dimension, and uh, fracture quantum and so on. All these things can be calculated actually. And uh, so we, we took this one and uh, we actually apply, so this is basically a continuum kind of idea, right? So, so you can take graph, uh, uh, the Griffith idea uh, for a graphene sheet. You can calculate gamma s. Uh, you can find actually uh, Young's modulus that is uh, strain dependent, okay? And and you can basically for different crack lengths, you can apply what would be the sigma ultimate, and you can see that uh, so M D is here. So M D at uh, one Kelvin is that. And MD at 300 Kelvin is uh, these results. Okay, so you can clearly see that actually Griffith is kind of you know like it's not bad. It gives you the sort of you know a similar trend, but the values are certainly not uh, not very close, right? But but again, they are not sort of you know like twice off or or three times off. But I mean, if you look at all these values, they are still within. Uh, sort of, you know, like uh, uh, 30, 40 percent off. Uh, but on the other hand, this quantized structure mechanics uh, uh, formula, that is this one, uh, when applied into a system with these properties determined appropriately, actually gives you results that are pretty reasonable. Okay? So again, you can see that uh, uh, what, what you can get here is some of the concepts that you see in continuum even though, you know, like this is nanoscale type structure, right? Uh, some of those basic ideas, in fact, can be applied uh, with some, uh, some uh, sort of, you know, like uh, condition that, that they are not the exact solution, uh, but they give you a fairly uh, uh, a reasonable result. So now we actually took the same thing and we tried to uh, uh, take the previous model and we try to modify that to uh, uh, include temperature. We, we try to modify that into actually uh, take into defects and so on. And uh, uh, so here you can see that uh, uh, the model with MD with pristine, uh, this is the continuum model that gives us result. Uh, this is MD with the defect, right? And uh, so this is the crack length and again at different temperatures. You can see that the ultimate uh, strength actually reduced with temperature, uh, but uh, but I but the interesting thing is that the uh, the model, uh, which is uh, requires far less computations, uh, it gives us a fairly good uh, uh, good approximation. Now uh, another problem that we have been uh, looking at is that uh, what happens when you bring other types of atoms. Uh, into this system. So as I said that, uh, uh, you know, one of the common atoms are hydrogen. So if you have hydrogen connected into uh, graphene sheets, okay, uh, how do we do that? Now that actually uh, changes some of the hybridization because some of the bonds actually uh, change the form from sp2 to sp3. And that lamps we can actually model this. So here is a simulation that was done using lamps. Um, at uh, 300K, uh, this is a pristine uh, um, graphene sheet uh, being pulled. So it's a simple stress strain curve. And then we add 1% of hydrogen atoms, okay? And 10%, 30%. So you can see that uh, basically what it does is it reduces the, uh, uh, the fracture strain substantially, okay? Uh, the fracture strength is uh, reduced substantially, it fails earlier at a, at a lower strain, and, but the initial stiffnesses are sort of, you know, like uh, very similar. And uh, so this is uh, uh, the same thing at 10% concentration of hydrogen additions and then at different temperatures. So you can see that the, uh, as the temperature increases, the, uh, the, the graphene sheet actually <coughs> Uh, softens and fails earlier, uh, 
but the stiffness uh, has very little influence on the temperature. Uh, now we take this one and we try to actually see whether we can use that simple formula involving the Bailey's principle and Arrhenius formula and uh, we modified the, uh, the, uh, the function uh, to include chirality as well as adiatom concentration by adding a sort of, you know, like a, uh, a constant and, uh, and we related that uh, chirality one can be actually related into the, uh, this diagram which gives you the zigzag and the armchair directions with the angle of pi by 6 and this is any arbitrary chirality, right? And you can show that this uh, this uh, gamma there is equal to approximated by cos theta. Uh, so we had that equation, and then actually um, we had to solve this one. And uh, I ran into a prof in our mathematics department uh, who actually solved this for us exactly. So. <laughs> So the solution for this was, uh, she found that there is a solution for this one, which is given by this error function, okay? Uh, it involves the inverse of the error function as well as the error function. So it's very, very interesting because now you have basically a closed form solution, okay? <laughs> and uh, uh, so you can, uh, uh, you can basically simulate that. And once again, it works very well, right? So this is the pristine sheet. Uh, this is 1% and these are the, the, uh, the empty simulations, right? So, uh, so the results actually are, are pretty good as far as the, uh, the agreement between the things are, but uh, obviously they are not going to be sort of perfect agreement. Uh, here we are showing uh, strength and temperature uh, for uh, zigzag. Previous one is armchair, uh, this is armchair and strain, strain, this is with strain rates and uh, so you can see that uh, uh, pretty uh, reasonable comparisons and uh, this is sort of, you know, a, a plot of uh, how strength will vary with hydrogen percentage and temperature. Uh, so you can see that uh, the strength will substantially reduce as the uh, temperature increases as well as the hydrogen concentration increases. Uh, same thing in terms of respect to hydrogen and chiral angle, okay, and uh, 